I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind and other home energy. We clean this shop out. Organize it, set it all up. That means I got time to play with this and room to play with it. And up here, you see we got the rotor, the magnet rotor. That. That's what I'm working on today. But here is what I'm working on right now. Holy moly. Will you look at that? This wire goes to this one, this wire goes to this one. This one was unhit. This wire goes all the way over here to that one. And you look, there's two more. So, <laughs> lots of fun on that. These two that are bent right here, by the way, they go together and then the other two go together. So that kind of keeps them separate. Then I, I was thinking this one came all the way up into here, so I finally realized that it comes off the coil and goes back this way. I did a lot of extra chipping. I used a chisel, just very light tapping and watching chips fly. Of course, I had my glasses and safety goggles on. And I was smart. I sat over there in the shade and uh, there was a little wind on me. It was pretty nice. It's a little warmer in here. I found this and I said, oh yeah, let's do it. Give you a full view of the shop. I got a bunch of empty boxes up there now. And room for two chairs if somebody wants to come and visit. So well, if you ever down this way, come on by. Anyway, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energy. Many good things, you enjoy. Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energy. Well, as you've seen in the last video I did on this, I didn't show you drilling through here. This was the first hole I drilled. This hole I drilled here to mount the stator. Wound up going through one wire. Then I drilled the two down here. And I went through two wires here. I'm sorry, three wires here and two wires here. And I missed this one. Well, anyway, show you this here. I chipped away all the fiberglass on both sides of the wire and then kind of smacked it until it broke off and cleared it off. That way you don't cut the wires. And I rejoined these two. This one here did not get hit. Uh, the wire was short so I wound up uh, running a uh, wire from here to here and then from here to here I hooked them like this after I cleaned them and then soldered them the way they make a good connection. And these do not connect to each other. And I went through all three of these <laughs> So I did the same thing here, here, and here. Well, after I got done and I started doing my ohms, I ohmed out between L1 start and L1 finish, and it came up to 1.8 ohms. 1.8 ohms here on L2. And from the start to finish on L3, 1.8 ohms, which I thought was great, and I was kind of happy about that. Then I decided to check for shorts, so you start checking between here and here and here and here and here and here. And this is one phase, this is one phase, and this is one phase. There's no way that there should be any connection between any of these three, or any of these three. Well, as it came out, between here and here, I had 1.2 ohms. And between here and here, I had 2.4 ohms. That's not too swift, and I forget what I had between here and here. But anyway, I did the math, I started figuring out, and I figured it was right over here, so I chipped up a little bit end up in, into here, close to the mount, and didn't find it. This is where I thought it was. Well, I did one more thing, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Okay, so in order to troubleshoot this just a little bit farther, like right here, I have this on L3, and you see how the magnet doesn't want to stay there when I'm just turn this little DC motor here. Oh my goodness. You see how that jumps around there? But it doesn't here, it doesn't here, but it does here. Well, when I hook between these two wires and I hook between the inside wires, I got one, four, six, and nine all did that. That's not right. Well, how come it didn't, you know, how come it didn't do it on seven? And also, I mean, if it's on 9 and 6, how come it didn't do it on 3? Evidently, there was a short somewhere. Then I went ahead and I did it to just the outside wires, and it wound up only 3 and 7. <laughs> well, let me show you. I went ahead and did the diagrams after figuring that, and everything was in the right polarity. So here's what we wound up with, and this is how I wound up troubleshooting it. Coils 3 and 7. If I look and I come to the center, and then I come to the outside, and then it comes to the center and comes to the outside. This is the way it goes. And the same thing from here 
with this phase it's outside to inside outside to inside and outside to inside and I say three and seven well that means it comes down here that means this one was conductive and seven was conductive and the only two wires that crossed making it where only two wires were in the junction were right here so I decided to test my theory this way and it came down here one four six and nine one four six and nine these four coils well once again the one thing that made these two and these two possible was this little connection here so I searched for it and I found it I was looking for it over here what I didn't uh, realize this outside the coil the wire comes to the inside of the coil as a start then goes out to the finish well this wire comes out here and runs over these wires are connected well this is the same as this wire getting really close to the side of this coil when I fixed the connection here it heated up the solder joint over here next to this coil and melted it into the coil so the problem was not pre-existing it's something that I did while I was repairing the stator Oh, well, I'm glad to have that figured out now everything is 1.8 ohms all the way across and there's the spot where this solder I was repairing here and here but this was the original joint which I moved this out after I got it but it was shorted to the side of the coil and now we got it fixed and she's all ready and to show you just how much damage I did to the, the stator itself there we go let's see this is the top of the mold let's turn it around this way brothers and sisters that's a lot of missing material and a lot of chipping it was a few hours into it but some would say it's not worth it but to me the same reason why I show you my mistakes the knowledge is worth it and to learn so you don't do things over again now, I'm probably not going to be able to get this back into the center but I am going to put this back in here and I'm going to recast all of this and I'm going to use this anyway because I want to see what the prototype one these coils took a while for me to wind which I'm not going to be doing them like this they're going to be a little bit bigger where I don't have to wind them like a CNC machine I can wind them a lot faster and that'll save on a lot of time and help keep the price of this down a little bit the prototypes coming along and I just thought I'd update you and show you what's going on I'm gonna go ahead and get this set in there and probably show you a little bit of the casting and hopefully within an hour or two We'll have this thing on the machine, and uh, which the machine right there. Well, there's the machine, and I have the rotor sitting up there, and you got a couple of the nuts and washers up there. So anyway, we should be able to put this together, and I'll put the prop back on, and we'll get a chance to see this thing fly and actually get some test results. I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Mm -hmm.